I'm getting ready for uh, the Men of St. Joseph's prayer group here in Our Lady of Carnes Shrine. It's very peaceful. I'll just show you out here. It's like when you arrive here, it's like this abundance of peace. Like you can just feel it. It is absolutely beautiful. People are looking at what's going on in America with the Eucharistic Congress that they had, the renewal efforts, and they were saying 50,000 people showing up. Um, is it Milwaukee or somewhere in the United States? We forget us Irish from 10 minutes away from here, 10 minutes away from here, in a place called Ashy Mass, there was a priest, Father Peyton, and he used to get regularly 50,000, 60,000 people at his rosary rallies. And he's not that long dead, but uh, you know, the, the, the amazing things that can happen from unexpected places. But one thing that, that kind of struck me today when I was here in the shrine is people come here and they leave prayer intentions. They come here, they write them out on pieces of paper and, you know, they're, they're asking for, you know, help. And it's, um, they just leave them here in the altar, you know, and it just, it just hits home how much suffering there is in, in the world, you know, and how often we forget to reach out to Christ, who is, you know, the way, the truth in life, but who wants to heal, who wants to heal. If we only had faith how much um, how much transformation could be done in this world. You know, God only asks us to do the, the possible and he does the impossible. But oftentimes we're very reluctant to do the possible in our life. And so how can God act in us if we're not willing to do the possible? And so, you know, I, 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 do, I do ask Catholics around Ireland because some of people have been commenting, couldn't we do what they're doing in America? Couldn't we do a big event like this? Couldn't we get together and have an Irish Eucharistic Congress or something? The one thing I will say, if we are not transformed by the Eucharist, what will happen? You know, are we going to be the same after encountering Christ? Or do we allow ourselves to be transformed by the Eucharist, by our Lord? You know, if the Eucharist really is the body, blood, soul and divinity, then that which we have digested should have spiritually transformed us into Christ. You know, if we know him, we will act like him. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's a continuous challenge between the old man and putting on the new man in Christ. But we, that's what we're called to do, to be transformed by Christ. Um, you know, I was, um, while I was driving here, I was listening to an episode of, uh, of the poem of the man God, in which our Lord goes to Porphyria, Peter's wife, to tell her that this was the last time he was going to come uh, and to, you know, to prepare her in a way for what was coming. Uh, you know, a very moving episode. You know, our Lord understands our weaknesses, our life, but he wants to, for us to act in a different way. And that's the greatness of his word, the gospel, his body, the Eucharist, it's a transforming encounter. But we have to see it. We have to consciously give our will to it. You know, it, God is not going to do violence on our will. He's not going to do violence on you and make us act like robots. We have to engage with this reality. We have to offer ourselves to Christ. Anyway, look, pray for us here. Pray for all the people that leave intentions here in the Shrine of Our Lady of Carnes here in Sligo. Very beautiful place. <laughs> it's just one of the most peaceful, beautiful places you could actually find in Ireland, you know, uh, as shrines go. 
you know, and there's definitely no commercialism here. <laughs> Although you can light a candle if you want. That's about the only thing that should be to. There is no shop. There is nothing here. It's just a place to pray. Uh, but anyway, pray for us. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.